uh, for bringing uh, the motion to the House today. I also uh, want to thank the Honourable Steve Dawson for his comments. I thought they were very measured and uh, good listening. Um, and also the uh, Honourable Alison Zamon. I have quite a few issues with the motion um, that's been put. Um, firstly, I don't think it should be called the cashless debit card. I think it should be called for what it is, which is the cashless welfare card. It's people, people on welfare that have got the card. That's, that's the reality. It's not just a debit card like my Visa debit card. This is people that are on welfare, right? So let's, then I understand, but I'm going to call it a welfare card for this debate, right? Because I, I, I have an office out in Kalgoorlie. So when this card came in, before it did, I was preparing myself right from the get-go. Now, I'm not sure if the Nationals have an office out there and have received people coming through um, with complaints about the card or any stories from on the ground, but I can tell you the stories I'm about to tell now are horrifying. Um, first one that I'm going to talk about, um, probably the toughest one I've had to deal with, was a four-year-old girl who had terminal cancer. Her and her mum come into my office absolutely distraught that they found out they were on the cash cashless welfare card. Now, the four-year-old daughter didn't have an alcohol problem, surprisingly, didn't have a drug problem, and didn't have a gambling problem. So when we called up the, uh, the uh, departments to uh, try and discuss how we go about making their social life a little bit easier, considering that we're talking about a, a young girl who's, you know, is not in a very good place right now and should be able to have um, a socially easy living life and shouldn't be putting things in front of her that are obstacles and um, causes of shame in public for the mother. Um, we tried very hard to put a case across to uh, the department around the fact that you know, they want to go on a holiday. They've been saving up and they want to go on a holiday overseas. Um, the issue had been that they were heading over to Singapore. And the question was, is the cashless welfare card going to work in Singapore? Do you, think they could, do you think there was an answer for that? We don't know. We can't ensure that every single um, ATM slot is going to work. Because let's be honest, even when it first rolled out, there could have been six ATM slots at, say, Woolworths, for example, but only three of them actually worked for the, the card. They have to each be open in each port. Now, there was no way of knowing whether that was going to happen. And the response we got um, shocked me the most. The response was, well, she's not on the welfare card. The carer is on the welfare card. Even though the funds are coming in for caring for the child, it wasn't about that. The mother didn't drink, didn't gamble, and didn't do drugs as well, by the way, but couldn't get off the card. The purpose of this card, as the Honourable Jackie Boydell said, is alcohol, drugs, and gambling to reduce them. Why is it that people such as this lady's mother, who doesn't drink, doesn't gamble, and doesn't do drugs, has to live under the same banner as an alcoholic and a drug addict. That is totally unfair and totally wrong. You know, another situation was where a man come in with his son who had autism. Doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't gamble. Father, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't gamble. He was a very proud young man who had been working with his disability. And one of the key things that helped him out with his disability was being able to control his own funds, being able to be independent, being able to go out there and buy things that he wanted to buy and not have to worry about uh, going to mum and dad for it. That gave him a sense of, of happiness. Because he looked after his own money, he was put onto the welfare card. Self-worth, exactly, member. Um, but because he looked after his own money, he was put onto the welfare card. Didn't drink, didn't smoke. And that's a big change for someone who's, who's getting into the, the um, ideology of, of spending their own money, saving, putting it into a bank account. And let's not forget, how do you save on this card? Because it all stays in this debit system within you. Does it get interest? Does it grow interest if you... St no, but if you leave money in there and you don't spend it for the week, you're 80% which is relegated to buying groceries and et cetera, and you don't spend it, it doesn't gain interest. So you used to be able to sit that off and put it in a savings account, no longer can you save money. You can put your money in there and never gain interest on it, but there's no benefit to leaving it in that account. You know, there's many things that are, that are wrong with the current system out there, and there's a lot of problems that happen with the rollout. You know, 
People that are out there now that are saying it's working and it's great and it's all this, they were people that supported it heavily before it was introduced. It's like buying a horse for $34 million, finding out it's a donkey, but still keep betting on it. That is what you see out in the goldfields at the moment. The people that were supporting it to start with that were consulted, like the councils, that were out there lobbying for it, going over to Canberra, they're not the people that I was talking to that were against it. The people I was talking to were the people that weren't heard. The people that said they rocked up to Centrelink one day, that they can't work because they've got an injury, that they're unable to attend work, and they find out they're on the card. There's no information on how to use the card. They weren't even aware they were going to be on the card. It was a massive issue. We had a couple of seniors, um, lovely people, who sat out the front of Centrelink with a sign, get ready, you're about to get your card. And they had droves of people coming in going, I didn't know I was going to be on it. I wasn't um, aware of this coming out now. What am I going to do? How does it work? You know, another story of a Goldfields constituent, one of your constituents, honourable member. Strong anxiety and depression. Couldn't leave the house. Doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't gamble. Doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't gamble. Couldn't leave the house. Husband had medical issues. Had to, had to buy medical supplies offline, has been doing that for years. Gets put on the card. Does online shopping with Woolworths. Online shopping with Woolworths didn't work when the card was first rolled out. But we didn't go out and prepare people. We didn't go out and consult people that only use that and can't go out in public that have medical issues that can't do that. Instead, we just roll it out and just go, oh, yeah, we'll see what happens. That family didn't eat for three days. Doesn't go out in public. Couldn't get online, couldn't get Woolworths to work, was calling up the department, couldn't work anything out at all. You know, absolute disgrace to think that we roll out something, not the first trial site, by the way, we've already tried twice, but let's not fix the issues, let's just roll it out, smack bang. Pretty sure they knew what was coming for this election, they just want to get it out as quick as they could. The problem is, when you do that, vulnerable people suffer, and suffer they did. The medical supplies online, wasn't allowed to use it because it wasn't approved by the department. These were places they were getting the medical supplies cheaper than what they would down the road because they're living on a, a bottom dollar of buck. They haven't got as much money. You know, people that used to buy things off Gumtree, eBay, second-hand cars. Do you know what you've got to do to get a car um, on the card? If you, for example, see in the paper, uh, there's a thousand bucks for a nice car that's, uh, that's registrable, you know, um, I'm going to buy that, 1000 bucks. Now, you're not going to be able to have that in cash because, let's be honest, 20% of your welfare is about you know, 200 bucks um, in cash. So it'll take you potentially three months to get that cash together. When you go out to purchase that car, you have to call the department, wait in line on the... Uh, we all know what it's like when you call um, particularly federal departments. Um, I don't know anyone that's ever sat on the phone waiting for Centrelink to pick up. But uh, you could imagine how long that takes. Now, meanwhile, this car is still being advertised in the paper. It's still floating around. So someone else who's working at the mine site there, he's got plenty of cash, he's cashed up, straight down, pick the car up. It takes days to get organised with the system on the cashless welfare card to be able to get a cash payment organised specially for you to withdraw cash to buy a car second hand. So instead, you're forced to, what are you forced to do? Go and buy a more expensive car? Well, you can't afford that. You're on welfare. You're on welfare at the end of the day. Community support. Well, I definitely don't see that the way that the honourable member who moved the motion sees it. And I have an office out there. The people out there do not um, tell me that they wanted it to start with. I had a community forum, and uh, even the Greens had a community forum out there, actually, um, because I think they wanted to hear what the community had to say, unlike other parties. And let's put it this way, it was well attended. And when I advertised this forum, I didn't advertise it and say, everyone against the card, come on down and have a whinge and, you know, let's go. I advertised it as, let's find out what the community wants. You tell me, leaders of the community, community members, come on down, let's have the debate. Happy to do it. Happy to stand up in front and throw as much junk as you want at me. And we had well over 50 people attend. It was well publicised in the Cow Minor as well. And I can tell you now, everybody in that room was against the card. And they were on the card. Now, what happens when these type of things happen? The media takes it. The leaders in the town talk it down and say it's only a handful of people. 
You know, all them stories I heard were powerful, desperate people that were vulnerable, that are now stuck and tarnished with, with a system that they shouldn't be on. If we're serious about targeting alcoholism and gambling and drugs, let's target the problem. Let's not target the poor, vulnerable person on welfare. It's a disgrace. You know, a lot of the evidence in this debate is anecdotally said. You know, and I've said stories here that people go, oh, it's anecdotally, you know. Well, I can tell you now that my office was broken in a week after it opened on the main street of Kalgoorlie. Window kicked in for a donation tin. I had a donation tin there for the Royal Flying Doctors. It was sitting behind my security screen and they tried to pull it out. There was no money in it. Um, no one had donated yet, which was a good thing. Um, but they kicked the window straight in. Now, the state government increased the police on the street in Kalgoorlie. Absolutely. It's gone up. I could tell you now, that's the reason that crime's gone down on the main street. But that's only anecdotal evidence. We also know that the council put in rangers. Um, probably not to the full ability they wanted to, but they put rangers out on the street that are patrolling the street. So we've got extra police, we've got rangers out there, um, but yet it's the welfare card that everything's gone good, gone good on? No, no, but this is what people are saying out in the goldfields. The people that are pro-card at the moment run this argument that the welfare card is making a huge impact. But yet you look at the auditor's office report that's been mentioned here, and the Honourable Ken Baston went and read them statistics back, 2016 and 2017, after the Honourable Alison Zamon and the Honourable Stephen Dawson mentioned. The auditor's office has rubbished them statistics. The data collection on this trial has been disgusting, and there is no evidence there that says it's working. But yet we just rolled it out in the goldfields. Now, again, not with the right consultation. There was an article yesterday, um, and we talk about uh, leaders in the community, and I know the Honourable Jackie Boydell was, was pretty vocal around um, community support and leaders um, in the community driving this. Well, I would think, because there is a high number of Aboriginal people who are on this card, definitely, definitely in the goldfields, and you'd agree with that. So I would think that the Goldfields Land and Sea Council which is a big body um, for Aboriginal people and native title, um, and are pretty well respected within the community in Aboriginal community in the goldfields. You would think you would listen to what they've got to say when they talk about the welfare card. Quoted from ABC Esperance, Trevor Donaldson, elder in Kalgoorlie. The Goldfields Land and Sea Council told the hearing at, in Kalgoorlie that he does not support the policy. Our mob out there are still facing the same issues out there, and there may be some people who seem some subtle changes, but overall, I would say no. This policy takes away the independence, basic human rights of managing their own affairs, and it drives from the, po from the top, and basically all non-Aboriginal people are affected. That is strong, strongly said by an Aboriginal elder in the town. But yet, we don't listen to that, we listen to just the council. Let's understand here, there are people that are not happy, that believe they were not consulted and believe that it was not rolled out appropriately. Let's listen to another Aboriginal elder, Pat Dodson, a senator. I recognise that there are some Australian communities who may choose the trial on the cashless card, but this must be on a basis of their free and prior informed consent. Consent. Have we not come anywhere in Australia now, particularly when we're dealing with these tough issues, these hard issues. And I understand, I'm a member for Mining and Pastoral, just like the members that have spoken, um, minus Alison Zamon, <laughs> Honourable Alison Zamon. And I understand across my electorate the issues. And I'm not standing here saying, get rid of the card and not have another option. I've been advocating for another option, the banned drinking register. This is something that focuses on alcoholism. This is something that is not segregated to just the poor people on welfare. Every single person is affected by the banned drinking register. The way it works is you rock up at a bottle shop, you show your identification. Well, we're supposed to do that anyway. But you show it and it gets scanned. Red, you don't get served. Green, you do get served. And then there's wraparound services that come in and support people when they are banned. You know, why aren't we focusing on the real problem, alcoholism? Why aren't we targeting that, just the people that are drinking? But no, we target the carers, the elderly. 
it's just wrong. And some of the scary stuff I've heard in the media and all the rhetoric and the Honourable Rick Wilson will carry on until the cows come home about how great this scheme is. And he's, he's really uh, on another planet sometimes. They said that there would be wraparound services. They said there'd be money. They said that there would be support. Do you know all the support that's actually come into the gold fields? 125,000 for a financial counsellor um, for a scheme to help the cashless welfare card participants better manage their finances now that we've restricted 80% of their wage into the in system. Where is the sober up shelter funding? Where is the organisations that are going to look at... If this card is, as the Honourable Jackie Bordell says, the purpose of reducing alcohol, drugs and gambling, show me the figures that it's increased in town, the sober up shelters. You show me where all the support services now have got droves of people who are now off the piss. You tell me where all the people that are now off the drugs. Let, let's, yeah, I know, that was a little bit cheeky. I apologise for that. Um, <laughs> off the drink. Um, off the grog. <laughs> um, that's me, uh, uh, regional for you coming out a little bit. Um, but look, I think um, you need to be able to show, if this is the purpose, you know, show me the flooding droves of people that are coming into these systems now who are cured, who are cured off this welfare card, um, who are now not drinking and not gambling. You know, what a load of rubbish. You know, I don't see that out there at all. I see people struggling. I see this system that's been implemented for people that want to turn around and say, oh, I've done something to try and fix the problem. You know, at the end of the day, we are trying. It's not a silver bullet. The banned drinking register is not going to be a silver bullet. It's another attempt to try. You know what we really need to see? And I've said it in this chamber before. We need to see the Uluru Statement from the Heart acknowledged by this country so that Aboriginal people have constitutional recognition in this country and make up their decisions on what their people want to do, rather than the white man coming in and thrusting these type of systems without even living in the area, just jamming it down. Now, Bill Shorten did come out to Kalgoorlie and did meet with community members. Unlike, uh, who was the Prime Minister at the time? Um, which, which Prime Minister? Uh, it was Malcolm Turnbull. It was Malcolm Turnbull. He flew in, right at night time, flew in, had these secret meetings. Yep, we're going to do the card. Yep, yep, see you later. Jumped on a plane, got out of there. Catch you later. Um, I'm not even sure if... Um, if the member voted for uh, the current Prime Minister, did, I'm not sure um, whether it was supporting Scott Morrison or not. But um, uh, Oh, did he? Well, there you go. But these are the type of things in the way it worked, was they just come out there and just went bang. You know, we're talking about elders like Trevor Donaldson that is respected in the community who didn't get an opportunity, in my view, to be properly consulted. And these are, they, these are organisations that have a voice for Aboriginal people. Um, not to mention the audit office. You know, this banned drinking register we've been working on that is looking at in the Pilbara now, which I believe, if it gets off the ground and gets working the way it should be, could, we could see it in the goldfields. 100% we can see it there. We're talking about getting UWA in, an independent person, to monitor the data, see how it works, and report back on it and review on it and make sure it's doing its job. You know, when you get told from the audit office that your data's rubbish and it's not working, Stop standing up and telling me it's working and it's great and the data's awesome and we need to continue the trial. How did you change that? What have you done differently? What are you doing to ensure that you can stand up at the end of that trial and say, we're making people's lives better? You know, it's, it's disgusting and I, I really believe that the people of the goldfields were not consulted properly and if they had been, we would have seen more implemented safety nets in place. We would have seen people like that mother who had her terminally ill daughter not on the welfare card. We would have seen the father whose son has autism not having to deal with a question on letting his son look after his own money or being restricted onto a welfare card. And so what if he wanted to have one beer? You know, the problem is, and, and I'll, I'm even going to run out of time because I tend to waffle on a bit, but one of the big issues that happened with the system the other day was it went down. The power went out on the whole card and they had no access to it. The system was out. So they couldn't access it and go and buy dinner and they couldn't do any of it. Now, what was the response on that? Well, you can't say use cash because they haven't got any. So when the system's down, they can't use it. So what is the safety net for families that buy dinner from day to day? There is no safety nets there. I look forward to hearing everyone else speak on the motion.